we are headed to pick up a car we bought sight unseen off Facebook Marketplace. A car that was GM's answer to the Ford Mustang in a first model year for GM. This car has been the go-to performance muscle car for many enthusiasts over the years. Let's hit the road back to Anchorage yeah. and uh, dig into the, what the pile we bought. Terrible buys or good buys? Nah, that was that. good. <laughs> Goodbye? Okay, it's a goodbye. Small community of Talkeetna is a super cool touristy kind of town. You drive into the actual town, but we're out here on like the outskirts where we're like... Oh, we could stop in at Talkeetna Brewing and get dinner. We could, but that sounds expensive. Uh, it does. Let's just get back to Encourage to... Uh, or uh, we could stop by Wasilla, the tacos can... Really, the shocks down out there? I don't think so. I'm shocked. <laughs> God, this thing hasn't been running in like 30 years probably, or longer. Maybe longer by the originality of it. The strap's still tight. Yeah, straps are... <laughs> no, no, that one's kind of loose. I don't know how much it matters. We did hit some pretty big bumps going out of there. I know. <laughs> A custom here. <laughs> Buying a car sight unseen is always a little bit of a gamble, and we have to say, we were a bit surprised when we laid eyes on this Firebird for the first time. Shoot, maybe we need to keep the trailer hitch on there. What is it even attached to? That's a good question. <laughs> These cars aren't that strong underneath, so it's kind of like, what? <laughs> what does that go to? It's not so safe for me, it's just a trailer ball size. 2,000 pounds, do not exceed tongue weight. <laughs> It's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Make sure there's a towing you all trailer, no problem. There's probably air shocks on it, I bet. No, he said there was the coil spring helper shocks. Oh, okay. He yeah. took them off, though, because it was sitting too high, apparently. Oh, my God, this is hilarious. It took some doing to get it open. We only were able to open it up just a little bit before. Look, it's, it hasn't been opened in years. Oh, it's got power brakes. Wow. This thing was fully optioned up. So let's see, no distributor cap, no carburetor, coils off. Maybe this has potential, who knows? This was all filled with leaves, but they blew out as we were driving. <laughs> oh, they just went down there instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like the, the three-dimensional trim here. It's so funny. <laughs> Look, even from the factory, it uses a random carriage bolt with a nut sticking straight up. Gonna unseize the hood hinges here, hopefully. Make sure to stand downwind. <laughs> wow. Probably enough. Gotta use the open and shut on the leafs as well. <laughs> the old open and shut. Best stuff there is. <laughs> you know the thing hasn't been touched in years when the hood hinges are seized shut. <laughs> That's what 40 years of sitting will do. Right? Ah, oh, it's the old tree log plugging off a vacuum hose. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what happened with the hood here? Oh. I think it's time for another coating of it. Oh, there we go. It's helping things out. I think we got it. Let's see if it'll... It even latches. What? Forcefully open. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that's actually better than some aftermarket hinges <laughs> I've used before. <laughs> what do we have here? Wow. The old spark plug plug a heater hose. <laughs> Bye. First things first, we need to get a wrench. Yeah, see if this motor is seized. Hey, at least someone took the radiator out for us. No, that's big. It's actually, that one's too big. Ah, yes, it is. 15 sixteenths. 15 just like what you said. Okay, now we know the size, we can go get the actual good impact socket that's a six point. <laughs> that is, <laughs> is going to round that bolt off. 
<laughs> Look how bad that is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> ah, yes, here we go. A deep socket. <laughs> Biggest one there is. And then you go, safety first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing seized. After finding the correct socket, we put the wrench on the front of the engine and begin to manually turn it over. But more on that later. <laughs> this is the problem with seismic stability in Anchorage. This is what the whole city's built on. <laughs> Feeling cute might crumble later. Let's go find a replacement tire. No. to choose from flat, flat, and that's the winner. Might be the winner for sure. I'll take what I can get, even though the production number on these tires is well before the turn of the century. It's like a head scratcher with a lug pattern. I switched out the dry rotted tire with a slightly less dry rotted tire. At least the second one held air. With the car now sitting securely on four wheels, it was time to move on to the next step. Seeing what lied beneath the moss and debris, which was slowly becoming a permanent fixture on the exterior of the car. Check this out. I found the right period correct wash for the Firebird. See, it says, oh, floats yeah. off dirt fast, safe for waxed cars. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I think we should give this a, let's give this a shot. Okay. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Oh, I see some other stuff there. Bug and tar remover? What's that? Oh. Well, here we go. I think we're, we're in business. Turtle wax, tree sap remover. Oh, it's approved. How much did that cost you? Oh, it's still liquid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here you go. Okay. This is crazy. Crusty classics with Aaron and Matt. Firebird back in the day at the drag strip. And that one is Mark Rich. Anyways, uh, I think we can clean this thing up with this smattering of vintage car care products here. For the car wash, we're gonna use this vintage DuPont concentrate. The part number ends in 78, so I'm thinking that this might be from uh, 1978. Oh, it's vintage. The engine bay, we are gonna use some purple power here. I how old it is, but it should work out. Nothing better than the Home Depot bucket. Luckily, it does happen to have a grit guard in it, so no worries there. Ah, yes, this is a special formulation. Isopropyl alcohol and water. Anyway, that concludes the high dollar detailing supplies. <laughs> impressed with that stuff for it being from the 70s. Years of sitting under the midnight sun has caused the paint to fade away into the perfect patina. We're going to begin our work with a thorough wash of the exterior to release Mother Nature's grip on the car. Decades of neglect sitting in the woods in interior Alaska have caused moss and other plants to grow in areas where they shouldn't, and there's only one way to get it off quickly and easily, soap and pressure. Underneath, years of time spent sitting on the ground has also caused dirt and debris to creep into areas where they shouldn't. Chunks of dirt packs the nooks and crannies around the leaf spring shackles, the transmission crossmember, and the front subframe pockets. We'll work hard with the pressure washer to forcefully wash and rinse the dirt and debris away to leave a clean starting place for the next part of the project. Right, so what we've bought here is a 1967 Pontiac Firebird 326. Right, so we pulled this out of the woods up in Talkeetna, Alaska. It is pretty much all original. As far as we can tell, the paint and everything is untouched. 
It's 100% original. Now, these cars are getting harder and harder to find, but we have found the lowest mileage unrestored original that I think we could possibly find. Absolutely. Not to mention, it's also Alaska. Usually this junk is completely rusted out. This thing is like totally solid for a 67 Firebird. Unfortunately, the Firebird didn't include any keys, so we have to be a little bit creative. Our idea is to re-key one of the door lock cylinders to see if the key will match the ignition switch. I'm not sure if a 67 had matching door keys and ignition keys, but it's worth a shot. We can't get the old ignition switch out without a working key, otherwise we'll have to drill it out and ruin the bezels. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario is our new key fits the ignition switch. Either way, we're gonna try and start this thing. As a backup, we bought a replacement lock cylinder set off eBay. It's a good solution, but it might require drilling and cutting to get the old lock cylinder out. Matthew has removed the lock cylinder out of the door. We're gonna take it to the locksmith and see if we can get a key made for that. Looks good. Well, we got the new key here. Let's see if it fits in the ignition. No, Dang it. it doesn't work. This thing's too low mileage for the ignition to be all worn out and just turn without a key. <laughs> right. As good as these new keys look, unfortunately, they did not fit the ignition. So we're gonna have to get a little creative to get this motor unstuck. Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh, you know what we never checked is how much oil's in this thing or if there is any. What are we running in this thing? We've got Champion J12Ys. Oh, that looks old. That's really old. The oil dipstick hasn't been touched in over 40 years. Ooh. That's oh, not yeah. good. Where's the oil? that Marvel mystery oil you've been looking for? Well, we can definitely say one thing's for sure, the spark plugs are crusty. Breaks at freeze, stuck, or frozen parts. Now, let's give it a go here. I wonder if this can break this thing loose. I've taken a piece of vacuum tubing here, and I put the straw down the vacuum tubing, and now I'm gonna use that to put the oil in the cylinders. Let's see if this works out. He's solid. <clears throat> I'm just tightening the bolt. I think the best thing to do would maybe hook up the starter and try that with that or something. Since we don't have the keys, since this thing had no keys, unhook the neutral safety switch under here and bypass the key. There's the wiring we need to get to. 12 volts into that and it'll energize the starter solenoid. Here you've got, um, this looks to be the power wire. This is the ground wire, obviously. Well, this blue wire goes to nothing, so let's just yank that out of there. Oh wow, that's crusty. Will that even make a connection? <laughs> Perfect fit. <laughs> Original from 67. Woo! As tight as it gets. I don't think that's gonna work. Put the thing in and crimp. Now we got a solid ground connection. We can just slip it right on this terminal and call it good. For this one, we're gonna have to like max out the adjustment on this. I just got a GM terminal here that'll slip into that spade connection. So we'll just clip the alligator lead on like that and then we can plug it in here and test it. I'm gonna try the purple wire because I think the purple goes direct to the starter, but I could be mistaken. Let's kind of do that. Just gently slip together. We'll switch the terminal to the other position if nothing happens when we try this. Nice. Car is in park, so it's not gonna go anywhere. There we go. First attempt at trying to turn over the Pontiac 326.
to be the wrong side. Okay, we've switched the connection. Let's try it again. Or assuming that maybe the starter is just toast, like the solenoid has probably seized up from rust or something like that, so it just won't even do anything. Won't engage the starter. So we may have to pull the starter and either clean the solenoid or replace it. Well, well, we gave it an honest effort. We tried, but we're going to keep trying until we get something out of this. The thing we didn't think of is, was the battery just dead? I didn't even check to see if this was a good battery. Oh, 12.56. Yeah, it's fine. Dang it. Well, battery it is good. It was worth a check. It was worth a check. Yeah, right, we've got to investigate the starter and see what's going on. This looks like super comfortable. Wow, look at this exhaust here. <laughs> I call that old straw. Old half moon. What? what in the heck? How? So, is there a hole in the oil can? Is my question. I do see oil seeping there. Looks fine. It's dented up a little bit, but it's not like it's crushed. There is an oil filter on this thing still. I see it. This is crazy. They're perfect. Like the floor is absolutely perfect. Yeah. You know, look, it has that track link. Wow, oh, that's so cool. But underneath the undercoating, it's still the factory paint. Like, just the original. There's this bolt missing on this side. Oh no, the whole trance is busted. Really? Do tell. So on the side here, this is the servo that actuates, engages the bands and the transmission most likely. Oh yeah? Look at the side of the case here. It's actually cracked off where this retaining ring would go. So that means this car, the transmission probably wouldn't do anything. It probably wouldn't go in forward or reverse. That's crazy. So it's just, maybe, maybe that's just... Maybe that's the reason it was parked. Yeah. Dang, we're just going to have to do a full drivetrain retrofit with that being said. Oops. That's a shame. Well, I'm going to still take off this. Yeah, we can see if we can get the motor free at least. Let me take this cover off here. Ta-da! Ah, oh, cobwebs and everything. You ready to see if the motor will turn over? Use our good old friend the starter here as a prying area. After all, the starter doesn't work, so it can't really hurt anything there. Wow, that is tight. Tight. Gotta engage the dual starter technology here. Wow. Got nice. one more thing to look at. A couple more things, actually. So here we have the world's best Costco boroscope. Let's take a look inside here. Oh, it doesn't look rusty. It's like carbon buildup and stuff. But those two look fine. What's this side look like? I don't know. It looks just like a stamping in the piston or something. Because there's the valve depression. Sure. Weird. That is weird. It doesn't look bad at all. That's what I'm confused about. I'm like, well, what? That doesn't look bad either. Huh. What? This thing is seized up pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm on this crank bolt at the same time you're with a pry bar on the flex plate, and it's really not doing anything. It's still locked up as tight as can be. Yeah, I, I'm prying as hard as I possibly can. I've got this huge, what is this, a four-foot pry bar, and it won't even, won't yeah. even budge. Yeah, you've got the lever for sure with that. Yeah. Flex plate diameter. Clap classics, people. You never know quite what you're gonna get, and this particular car didn't fail to let us down. <laughs> it ended up being that the motor was completely locked up. We think it's a spun bearing, but uh, a boroscope didn't really show us anything. It just Not looks fine in the combustion chamber. No rust or anything. We put penetrating oil down the cylinders. Didn't end up working. Transmission end up having a blown yeah. out servo on the side of it. Case is cracked on the transmission. It's no good. So what are you going to do? 
What are we gonna do? What do you think we should do for a drivetrain retrofit in this car? I don't know, leave a comment down below. Be curious to hear your opinion. Stay tuned for the next video where we clean out the interior and find out what's inside. Uh, I can almost smell it from here. <laughs> Watch as we delve into the wonderful aroma of springtime in Alaska, <laughs> all crammed inside of this clapped classic. <laughs> Oh my god. That's gosh. actually a Glade uh, air freshener smell, isn't it? I think it was. I mean, they may have discontinued spring that one. Springtime in Alaska. If you're from the area, you know that's not necessarily a springtime smell that you want to smell. Not at all. It does disgusting. not smell like fresh flowers and growing grass. No, no it smells like decaying uh, leaves and uh, your dog's winter's worth of uh, smells left in your backyard. I yes. <laughs> Uh, everything comes unfrozen and you get all the smells at once. It's its, it's, its own special aroma. Unfortunately, we're going to have to spend some serious money to make this thing run. That's how it goes, though. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. This yeah. one, we're not necessarily losing because the body actually is the best part of this car. Uh, well, don't mind all the dents and but pieces. But it has an epic patina. Look at it. What do you think? Can we get this I think we can get this out of here? Yeah, we can shape this back out, no problem. The nice thing is, there's no quarter panel rust in this car, which is quite incredible. That's actually pretty rare. Yeah. This is, I think, the first car I've seen of this year, at least up here, uh, with no quarter panel rot. Yes. Seems like always the inner wheelhouse. Like, my car, I could just stick my hand between the inner and outer wheelhouse. And oh, yeah. Nothing. They've <laughs> always, you know, every one of them has been driven in, like, salted winter conditions, but this one doesn't look like it has. I know it. Be sure to check out some of our other videos and laugh at us while we build cool cars together and laugh at all of our failures. <laughs>